Well, welcome to the Poetry Den, where words which written on our page are now performing the stage, and solidarity extends between poets and friends. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here this evening. To all of you that are joining us on Zoom, we welcome you as well. Um, also, if you'd like to be a part of our open mic, you can let um, my friend um, George know in the chat, and we'll make sure that you get heard tonight. Almost an amen. You can't. Um. Again, my name is Pam Blair. I should say again, my name is Pam Blair. Most of you already know that. Um. And I'm your host, the founder of the Poetry Den. A um, little housekeeping for those that don't know, there is a bathroom that's back in the corner. Um, we have a lot of this place used to be a, um, a swimming pool. So there's, you know, some echoing noises. And so even when you use the bathroom, um, not that we can hear you use the bathroom, that would be wrong. Um, but we might be able to hear you use the hand dryer. At least we know you washed your hands which is awesome. Um, let's see what else, so that I was keeping, um, as far as phones, if we can put our phones on silent or you know, a buzzer or something like that so that um, it's not a distraction, that'd be awesome. This coming year in June, we will be, uh, have, uh, we'll be celebrating an anniversary of 12 years um, in the city of Stockton. And I don't deduct uh, the years where, you know, COVID had us sitting at home because there were times that we actually did some things online, um, as most people did. And then even when we came back, we came back with um, masks on, which was extremely difficult to do. So I'm so thankful that we don't have to do that or we're in a position where um, we can better, um, you know, be aware of, of, all the things that we need to be aware of as far as like coughing in one another's face. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I'm excited about that. I'm happy for it. Um, I was just speaking with this, some gentleman in the back and he was reminding me um, how uh, the, the faces that come and go. And when we first uh, started this and my friend, my best friend Sue Bernard is here and <clears throat> she was actually with me when I presented the poetry then to uh, an organization and asked them, could we be in their space? And so, you know, we had planned it out and people were coming and we had some of the same people that were coming all the time. It was like, yes, you know, and everybody was hyped about it. And then all of a sudden people weren't coming back and you're like, oh, what's, what did I do wrong? Oh my God. Um, and so I kind of learned from that, <clears throat> um, that people will come and go. <clears throat> and they have um and then people come back and so it's just been like a refresher of like uh, people that come and experience it for however long they want to um and then people that come back and people that stay around and so i'm grateful for the time that we come together and i feel like whoever's supposed to be here will be here um and so that's kind of how i look at it and stop trying to use um, some type of mechanism that says that I, I did something wrong. So I'm always glad to be here. It always takes me a minute to get here in my head. And once I'm here, then, then um, I'm excited. I'm thankful for uh, IUSB Civil Rights Heritage Center for allowing us to be in the space. Can we give them a round of applause? Always, always um, say that George, comes away once a month from his family to be with me um, and all my shenanigans and all my requests. But he's always, and I do mean always, always, always so grace, graceful to me and is willing to aid me whatever way he can. So I appreciate you very much. Most of you have been here before and know the story, so I won't make George go through that, um, but we'll kind of go right into our open mic. So what happens is we do an open mic, as most of you know, um, those online, again, if you want to join us, make sure you just uh, message George in the chat. And um, But we'll call, I randomly, you sign up on the list out there, I just randomly pick you. You have like five, seven minutes um, to do as many poems as you want, or do one poem for five minutes. 
Um, and then we'll move into our featured artists who I'm super excited about. And yeah, so y'all feeling okay? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. This didn't happen until I got up here. Um, so I'm gonna read a few poems. Uh, the first one I wanna read uh, is a favorite of mine. I do this a lot. I have a few favorites. I don't know about you, but you know, it's kind of like foods, food. You know, you have favorite food. You don't just eat it once. It becomes your favorite because you eat it a lot. <laughs> so that's kind of how I have a, a few po poems that I do a lot and you've heard a lot. But I always say that just because you've heard it, there might be someone else that hasn't heard it before. And so it bears repeating. And this particular poem is called The Mirror. And it was a poem that I actually wrote to myself. Sensuous in your behavior, yet you wave it to love because of fear. <clears throat> fear that the past is too close to the present. And even though that stuff is irrelevant, you can't see the future because you refuse to look in the mirror. A mirror you no longer smile in, for all you see is old wineskin because you've been drinking all the wrong words. Drunk on words that have destroyed your self confidence. And the evidence? is you have not yet claimed your inheritance. There's beauty in your eyes, and the beasts are the lies that try to fertilize seeds of unforgiveness lying on the inside. You see, in order to love another, one must discover your own sleeping beauty, maybe become the author of, I am pretty, yeah. and I like myself. I like myself because the image of who I was made, a creator who promised never to leave me, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> a creator who promised never to leave me, but as long as I wanted to stay. And I'll bathe myself in his blood that cleanses me from the stench of the day. A day that I will one day understand that church, family, and school weren't the only plan, but having dominion over my life, hopes, thoughts, actions and dreams might help my fellow man. So when I look in the mirror, whom shall I fear? False accusations, manipulation, devastation, or do I start a revolution beginning with internal evolution when I look in the mirror? Mm -hmm. that piece. Okay. Another poem, my best friend, uh, again, Sue is here, and um, she um, moved back to, you know, longtime resident here, but moved to um, California and helped take care of um, her mother in law. And how many years has it been since she passed away? Ten. No. Well, how long, how long has she passed away? She passed away About a year and a half, year and a half ago. Um, her name is Mariana, and Mariana was, a, was was an artist, and I'm also an artist, uh, very beautiful soul, and so uh, she lived to be 90, 95 years old, which is a long time, um, but she, I think one of the last drawings she did, was it for us? Her last drawing was for you. Yeah, so we have this, her drawing uh, sitting in our house, but this poem I wrote for her. And it's just called A Poem from Mariana. Oh, to have loved and loved again. To have been a friend in moments of circumstance at the risk of offense. To have asked for the master's hand with a heart of prayer. And to have wiped the faces of tears when life felt unfair. To all the cheeks you've kissed and loved ones you've missed. To the creative hands of a meticulous artist for the trips you took and your adventures through books, your drives along the coast to wine countries, our glasses toast. From the mountains outside of your back door to the sun that seemed to set on the ocean's floor, to a world that seemed to exercise its revenge, to the nights we turned to Facebook for all its shenanigans, to have been of spirit, body, and soul, to cherish memories left to behold, 
to earth suits that don't last forever, to the stories that will always tie our hearts together. You are dearly missed, Mariana Bernard. It's for you, Bill. I know you're watching. <laughs> And I'm gonna read just one more piece and then we'll start our open mic. Is that all right? Okay. Um, this one I wrote not long ago. Actually, did I write it this year? At the end of last year, I think. Um, and I don't know that I've ever done it here, but I have done it a few other places. But it's called, There's Something Very Unique About Us. And us would be, me and brown skin here. <laughs> <laughs> There's something very unique about us. Crack open that melon, very sweet about us. African kings, Nubian queens about us. Jazz, blues, hip hop, R&B about us. Mm -hmm. NFL, NBA, track and field about us. Greens, beans, tomatoes, potatoes, you name it. How about us? Love and basketball, Crooklyn, Black Panther, hidden figures about us. Yes. Afros, cornrows, twists, locks, and braids about us. History books give some chapters about us. <laughs> Madam C.J. Walker, Garrett Morgan, Nathaniel Alexander about us. Some say there's something very unjust about us, but I say there's something very stardust about us. Let the church say amen, amen about us. Look at your neighbor and say blessed and highly favored about us. That's that piece. All right. So I'm gonna open up with, uh, let's see, Wayne. Come on down, Wayne. Got some love for my friend Wayne. Well, thank you, Pam. That poem was a real good introduction for me. Because <laughs> yeah, we read, you wrote about beans and greens. Yeah. Well, just listen to what I wrote. Oh, okay. I thought you were ready to pull some beans out of your. <laughs> no. Um, and I couldn't come up with a a uh, title for this, so the title is just the date that I wrote it, March twelfth, twenty twenty four. Brussels sprouts on taco shells, covered up with cheddar cheese. Acorns course with tater tots, all seasoned up so as to please. How are we to eat this stuff? It's really up to you. I'll mix mine all together and serve it up as stew. <laughs> but if I had a choice, I'd probably eat your greens and beans. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> Obedience, contribute to the co common good, be poor and trite, afraid to die, forgive the world for being absurd. Uh, Flannery O'Connor wrote short stories and she also lived on a farm and worked that farm. Flannery's Barnyard. Three little chicks and a mother hen live in a coop since their birth. I asked them once and then again, what are any of you worth? The first chick told me that she's alive, a whole lot better than being dead. With this, the second said with a sigh, I simply live to get ahead. Then Mother Hen, who looked after her brood, spoke to those two and set them straight. I fear, my darlings, you've misunderstood. You rush ahead when you really should wait. 
Then said the third with a tone of scorn, just living and getting is not for me. My life's all about eating corn. <laughs> and with this, the mother did agree. Your, your purpose, my three little friends, you see, is to eat and get fat rather than thinner and resign yourselves along with me to be served up as Sunday dinner. Uh. All right, one more time for Wayne, please. And thank you, Wayne, for not pulling any food out of your, your shirt. <laughs> uh, again, if there's any of you in the audience that um, I did not get, I will go out and visit the, the sign-up sheet and make sure that you get on the list for t this evening, uh, especially to those that are online. And just put it in the chat, and George will let you know. Uh, next, I'd like to bring up EJ. So, so I'll thank you. Mine aren't quite as lighthearted as Wayne's. <laughs> Sunday dinner. Was fun. Um, I started this one a few months ago, actually longer than that. I remember I read like I only had two verses done at the time, so now I've added some more to it. And <clears throat> I realized I don't have a lot of titles for my poems. So now this one. Start. The far right believers clamor and cry, their faux faith in a God compliant to their side, their rules and laws meant to exclude and shame, except for those truly righteous, those they laud and fame. They brick up their beliefs, no gate or door. Jesus knocks, no answer, truth they ignore. Make the churches root down rich pastoral trees, built on sand, revolving doors. They fall over in a breeze. Sinners, blasphemers, they clamor with rabid lips covered in lather. Minding the fences, they exclude so many. They miser God's love instead of the plenty. They sing the hymns, misunderstanding the words. Quote the scripture, but miss the, the biggest verb. Love your God and who's next door. Love's a commodity you can't buy in a store. The brainwashed masses cannot be convinced. They worship false idols on marbled plinths. They exchange God for money, votes, or guns. But in heaven above, there is only one. Um, I wrote this one today at church. That's All right. <laughs> If you're fighting a war and believe God is on your side, you believe in the wrong God. If you belong to a church and believe others are lost, if they don't join you, you believe in the wrong God. If you keep score of tracking your salvation, you believe in the wrong God. If you see your church putting money towards pretty things instead of those in need, you believe in the wrong God. And if you think others believe in the wrong God, you believe in the wrong God. Um, this one I wrote earlier this week. I was going through some anger issues, so it's real short. Um, holding on by a single thread, not listening to the voices in my head. Anger scraping through my veins, a madman laughing, holding the reins. What you going to do with your life and during this mental battlefield of strife? You say I'm worthless, but I know I'm not. This little kid needs his fucking shot. Um, and lastly, I know I'm going to go a nice one. Um, 
I'm looking for. There it is. You are enough. This one has a title. And I have read this one before. And this is one of my favorites of my own. Right. I'm so glad you're here. Please understand that you're loved. You've been through some hard times. I can see you patiently waiting. Life hasn't always been easy. Sometimes friends or family let you down. Each step you push yourself forward. Determination fires are in your eyes. You are accepted as who you are. You're so unique, one of a kind. Let no one else define you. Let your inner light shine bright. The secret passions you've kept hidden. Don't hold back, find your voice. Like the quiet strength of a slumbering lion, awise, awake, awake, arise, and roar your sound. You are a good person, and I believe in you. You brighten that room when you enter. You are enough as you are. You are enough as you want to be. You are enough as you have been. You are enough. Thank you, EJ. Um, it's been a re really great pleasure to watch you grow in your poetry from the time he first came. And um, yeah, I appreciate him a lot. He comes with me and does a lot of things. So give it up if you want more. All right. Well, I'm going to bring up Susie Keys. All the way from California. You know, she came all the way just to do open mic? Kind of, sort of. It's been a minute since I've uh, been able to be to open mic, so, and this has always been my favorite, so. Yes. I, I like it. Um, I love nature, and I write about nature a lot, uh, so that's always kind of part of my, part of what I talk about. So this one is called Good Morning. Sunshine after a stormy night, soft breezes enticing me to be still. The songs of the birds, a sweet melody, blooms on the flowers bursting open. The greenness of it all brings hope, hope that is crazy as the world gets. Nature still has not forgotten how to wake up in spring. Hope that my roots will continue to sprout with new growth. Hope that I am stronger than the weeds that surround me. Scents of lilacs make me smile. The dripping of the gutter reminds me of rain. Falling whirligigs take me back to my childhood and the church bells in the air bring me peace. Spring brings wonder to my mind and desire in my heart. Wonder at the beauty of it all. Desire to see, to do, to accomplish, to grow, to burst open. Wonder that I am here to witness another spring. Desire to do it all over again next year. Train running the tracks in the distance traffic noise picks up, clouds start to gather and hide my sunshine. My coffee cup is almost empty. The sanctuary of my spring morning is coming to an end. My day on the other side is about to begin, but I keep the sounds, the smells, and the scents forever with me able to recall the peace of my refuge with the closing of my eyes and a deep breath. I can leave it because I know it will be waiting for me on another brand new day. Good morning. Uh, Pam mentioned we moved to California and I think I wrote this not long after we moved there. Um, and it was a dream. To, move, to be there, and so this is called Dreams Come True. Dreams come true is on my mind as I sit near the Pacific Ocean. Dreams long held in my heart now finally put in motion. Motion, movement, force set free. Stagnation, procrastination, unbelief now flee. 
I put my faith to the test as one foot was placed before the other. Faith joined with movement caused the dreams to do more than hover. I realized no airlift was coming. I would not be transported to a new place if I was not willing to leave something behind. Then the same old, same old would be in my face. Dreams mixed with reality, and I sense the totality. Living the dream does not mean it's easy. Storms and struggles mix in with the breezy. Dreams cost money, take effort and time. It's real, it's life. The sun does not always shine, but I love it. It's mine, it's blessed, and it's new. It strengthened my faith and expanded my view. Yes. My 10 stakes are moving. I'm taking more ground, moving forward where my blessings abound. One dream filled and more in my heart, momentum causing motion to my very full cart. What's next? I ask God and he points to a place called the Valley of Dry Bones and I look at his face. He says, can these bones live? And I survey the valley that holds them captive. No water, no life, barely air to breathe. But he says, my words can set them free. Muscle, sinew, flesh will grow. A valley of death will now hold hope. So what's next on my plate? is to believe the impossible, not to be deterred by what looks unattainable. Looks can deceive and shake my beliefs, but words of life overcome that deceit. Uh, this is kind of um, dedicated to Pammy because she, um, she inspired it. We send each other poetry periodically and, you know, hey, tell me about this, tell me about that, mostly spell check it. And, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. but, but we, you know, we're honest with each other about what we feel and we trust each other's opinion and we know that we only have each other's good at heart. So this, I wrote this after she had sent me um, probably an extremely deep piece. I can't remember which ex exactly which one it was, but it's oh, wow. called, yeah, a lot of them. <clears throat> it's called Speak. It's really to all of you. I read the words you have sent me, a new poem for me to see. Pardon me. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to start off. Can I start off? Okay. Speak. I read the words you have sent me, a new poem for me to see. I read it over once, then twice. The words are never anything nice. They challenge, they pull, they are never dull. They are thoughtful and they are deep. The words are ones that often steal my sleep. I love the words that go against the grain, the words that expose what drives us insane. Speak to me, my poetry friends. Let the words flow without end. Poke me, prod me, make me work. Rake the coals and stir up the dirt. I want to hear of the struggles. I don't fear what is uncomfortable, for it's the wrestling that makes us strong. Overcoming the pain gives me a new song. So use your words and speak what's true. Open your heart and give me a clue to the wonder that is inside. Speaking your words and nothing hide. Exposing the darkness that once blurred my sight, we no longer fear when we become the light. I have one more of this. Uh, is there time, Danny? Yeah. Okay. This one, um, it's my nature of things again. In fact, my husband just sent us, it's about, I started talking about hummingbirds and he just sent us pictures of these have these little hummingbird nests up or under our gazebo and they and we love to watch those things you know and just the nature and it speaks to me and all the different things that happen when i'm when just things that people just pass by you know they don't even look at and and we we kind of take notice in our yard because uh we love it and so this is called true colors i watched the hummingbird flying about then landing on my feeder and drinking from the spout at first glance the head feathers appear to be black, 
but a turn of his head takes my first sight back. Feathers bright red now with a shiny glow, when black they were just a moment ago. The red was invisible to me when I looked at first, but a tilt of his head made the color just burst. The color was always there, but not revealed until the light reflected and the bright red was unveiled. What other things are not visible, I have to ask, because my timing or perspective are not on task. What we first see is not all there is, yet we judge at first sight and don't know what we miss. One moment I may be stumbling with blunders, but look again, and now I'm filled with wonder. Don't miss the brilliant for the lack of walking in the light. Don't miss the deep because you have only near sight. Look past the first appearance and hang out for the rest. You may catch the light of someone shining at their best. Life may seem dull and plain and excuse me, life may seem full of pain and dull, but only because you may have a thick skull that only tries once to understand, never sticking around to truly comprehend. Keen vision takes time to hone and grow. And when we take that time, our senses can flow. New sights will be seen, new ideas, new power, impossible things we could see every hour. As a world that was hidden shows real color, we find joy in the differences we see in one another. Let light reflect the true color of our beauty. True colors. Thank you. All the way from California. One more time for Sue. Thank you for sharing that. I love those pieces. I don't think I've heard any of them, have I? Maybe not. <laughs> All right, Miss Kiki. Come on. times people's lives with them mm -hmm. um, and this first piece I want to share with you is called leave and just want to trigger warning it's about DV it's not graphic mm -hmm. but it's about DV um, I believed you when you said you loved me but the truth of the matter was that you didn't love I instead you loved what was between my thighs and the fact still remained that hidden behind your eyes was the lies that you told me and I didn't leave right then because I, uh, I like the way you hold me. Mm -hmm. So I decided to stick around and I decided to play your games and, and everything was okay until you called me her name. And I was like, oh no, I can't wait. I got to get out of this relationship of love and hate. And I was ready to leave and you got it on your knees and you baby, please, I never do it again. I stayed later. Then you raised your hand to me and I was like, oh no, I gotta leave because you could never love me and nobody would never love me the way I need you but me. That's leave. I know y'all have heard me say amen like five times since I've been here. I just came from church. Um, the next piece, it's called Propaganda. Um, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do, but then again, there are those who think they do. <laughs> they bend your word and slant its truths and interpret it their way for comfort of use. Mm -hmm. In your word, it says to each his own, and why can't we just leave alone those who choose to be with this world instead be of, instead we judge, judge not lest ye be judged. Mm. We all have sin. We are of sinful nature and no sin is bigger than the next and unbent justification. 
And only when we are humble will you grant clarification on things we thought we knew, letting us know the only way out is the way through. Mm -hmm. And that you can't bring us out of or where we never went. And we realize this if we strive and live in lives of truths a bit. Thank you. All right, that's my friend Kiki. <laughs> Thank you to all of you that encouraged her to connect with me because she will be one of our featured artists this year. So look out for that. Um, after our next one, Lori, I'm going to have you come up. But um, let me do Ariane. Okay. Yeah? Oh, yeah, she's back with us now. She got Thank you. Yes. Yeah. How y'all doing? Good. Good, good, good. Kiki, where you go to church at that it got over in time for poetry? That was. Oh, so it was a thank you program. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get with you. I'm going to get with you. Okay, so I have a couple things to share. Um, one is that I'm glad I'm uh, back in South Bend now. I'm gonna stay put in one place for a bit, get life going. <clears throat> I've had a lot of really good things happen for me recently. And one night, um, a couple weeks ago, I was just really happy. You know, uh, I was happy with what I'm doing. I was happy with my mental health. <laughs> that, you know, for a minute, for a good minute, I was real happy. And I would never started thinking about people who aren't so happy right now out there. And uh, I'm from Rwanda. Uh, my family survived the genocide. And uh, so it's always so crazy that it's still happening, you know, to people. So this poem is about that, you know, uh, trigger warning about that. And then, then I have happier things to talk about. <clears throat> but I really want to share this one. It's called, How Could You? How could you? How could you cold wire your brain into seeing babies and judging the shade of their skin before seeing the need to be fed, held, rosy cheeks brushed and kissed and backs kept warm? Mm -hmm. How could you be the reason for the crying of emptied women, crushed by the bleeding bricks of their homes, knowing that everyone they love has just been put to the knife, sometimes machetes, just longer pieces of silver to soak in red? How could you? How could you decide that dirty lumps of treasure are needed enough to excuse the wholesale killing of brown bodies, entire histories reduced to some glitter in a rich man's home? How could you? How could you? How could you turn my poetry into eulogies? Making it impossible to think about flowers, sun stars, and chocolate when that is what I was made for. How could you? I, I wrote that with power I gave to myself, you know, yes. so, someone who was doing that could hear that and maybe I would change their mind, maybe, you know, so that's, that's why I write and oh, why I write, I wrote a book. Yes. <laughs> why I write, I wrote a book, it's pretty small um, and it is available online, although I do plan to bring copies at next month. Um, and so it's called Umunyarwanda Kazi, and that word means a Rwandan woman, Ooh. and that is what I am. And I have a poem about that, and then I have another poem I'd like to read from this, if that's okay. Okay. So, um, not many people know much about Rwanda except for the genocide. So I actually also would love to be. I'm from Rwanda. We, we're good. You know, we make good food, <laughs> good music, good, good fashion, good everything, you know. So um, I'd like to share a little bit about what I know of Rwanda and who I am. So, <clears throat> Umu Nyarwanda Kazi. Umu. Oh, sorry. Let me just say, I break the word down. It's a really long word. So that's the poem. Okay. <clears throat> Umu. Her. Who is she? What is she? Where is she from? Who are her people, her tribe? What is her grandmother's name? Umunya. Now she sounds a little like me, like you. What language is she speaking exactly? 
abantu be ni bande bari hehe hano bakoze iki umunyarwanda now we know now we understand she is Rhonda. She's golden sun haze over a thousand rolling hills covered in blood and smoke. She's the forgotten children running behind stolen tires, playing in the streets with the wild dogs and motorcycles, called them Motomoto. Moto. She is bright strong coffee in the morning and warm banana beer at night. She is chicken cooked over burnt coals and passion fruit juices mixed thick and just a little too sweet. She's a singer and a dancer. She moves her body for the ancestors of Ojeibe. She shows off to her mother and father and always finds her way back home. Umunyarwanda Kazi. Kazi means work, and that is also what she is. She is a marvel to behold. She does not tire, does not sleep. She only rests when the rest have. She eats stress, spits the tasteless fibers out. She chews on that sugar cane. She swallows the gum and thinks, and she, she works. Uyu, shanum yerguanda kazipe, nachindi. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. How'd you guys like a little spicy of the of my language? We love it. We love it. We like we like spice. <laughs> spice, spice, awesome. All right, I have one more thing to share. I am a nurse. Um, I work with the elderly. Thank you so much. It's great, um, and um, it's great. I I love the parts that I'm that I do, but I've really learned that big pharma and capitalism don't always let it be great <laughs> and uh because of that you know I, I always try to think about why i do this and my grandmother who um is in my blood oh, she's nice. beautiful uh she was a uh, january 1st baby mm -hmm. in 1942 mm -hmm. um and she passed away this year in january um but she's my inspiration for literally everything and definitely for working with the elderly. And so I have this poem I wrote about her. I think I've read it, I've read it here before, but I'm just gonna read this poem. <clears throat> Mama Mukuru literally translates to bigger mother. In her case, grandmother fits her the best because my grandmother is a treasure. My grandmother has always celebrated me they tell me that when she first saw my round cheek infant self, she exclaimed over my chubbiness, the thickness of my ankles and the darkness of my feather curls, and she nicknamed me Chibuchi. Now that translates to cute fat baby, a state I continue to live in. Is it any wonder it's the only name most of my family knows? My grandmother raised me to be strong, open, she would shave my hair down because she told me she believes children grow best when fresh air and nourishing sunshine can blow directly into their brains. Mm -hmm. I didn't care, will never care that that may not make sense. All I knew was that spending that hour with her buzzing over me was a gentle time. And it was immensely more preferable than all the minutes, seconds, and hours my own mother spent with her fists stuck in the thick brushes of my hair. When cutting my hair, my grandmother leans close, smells sweetly of church candlelights, and asks me what I'm thinking. When braiding my hair, my mother sits back on the low, heavy couch, one hand hotly gripping my shoulder to stop me from jerking, the other forcing a cold and sharp tooth metal comb up through my curled tangles. She smacks her lips, remarks she has no time for this, this being me, my hair loving me, and pours melting chemicals on my head to straighten it. Is it any wonder I felt completely blissful and capable of running miles into the sky, but only during those short summer weeks when I was bald, scalp free in the wind? And like an inverse version of Samson, the slow return of those inches sapped my strength the way they invited my mother's attention back to me. My grandmother prays with a strength unknown and unwavering patience. When she would firmly remind my cousins and I it was time for the nightly rosary circle, I would raise my voice up to whine just like them, but inside I was comforted. To this day, I cannot think of anything more peaceful or safe as the feeling in that living room. With her blue moonlight shining quietly through the window, curtains waving gently, 
Warm milk and honey lovingly weigh me down from my middle. Her deep melodious cackling chants pulling me into a sleep so mellow, so enveloping. Is it any wonder I relish the company of grandparents? Mama Mukuru Wanye, grandmother of mine, is it any wonder I too aspire to be a grandmother? Thank you so much. So um, when I come next month, I'll have physical copies, but if you want one now, you can get with me on my social media and stuff and help me, help me out. Help me, help me do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me, help me do this. <laughs> One more time for our audience. Um, I don't need to get with you, so you can encourage me to get my book out that's supposed to be out. Yes, yes. Years, years I got years somebody ago. for you. Okay, okay, you. awesome. All right, Miss Lori. Hi. Hey, what's going on? Y'all show some love for Lori? Thank you for holding space for me tonight. Yes. This first one is called Harvest Moon and it's a found poem that I revised. I write a lot on napkins or on little scraps of paper and stuff or in notebooks and then I forget about it and then I find it later. So it's almost like a, a gift. <laughs> so this one is called Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon hides behind her friends, the trees. She illuminates the night by light bathing its leaves. The second one is called Anticipation, and this was written uh, last June at Chicory Cafe. Low energy day feels like rain. The wind picks up. Leaves rustle in anticipation. Have you ever watched the leaves turn up before the rain? In anticipation for pure water streaming down our faces like the most beautiful ugly cry I've ever seen. <laughs> This one is um, an observance of our friend John Holman. He died a year ago today. Oh, wow. And um, this one is called Forever 55 for John. I'll try to get through this without crying, but no promises. Restarted this poem four times now. Operating in a haze. Experts call this shock. Thoughts are scrambled. Eyes are glazed from sweet sleeping quite a lot. Only last year only left the house once since Friday night. Wearing a Ludwig drum t-shirt you gifted me years ago. I noticed on the bottom of the computer screen that it's 55 degrees today. The age you were when you left on Friday. Please visit me in a dream and tell me you're okay. Aww. I guess I'll, I'll read one more. This one is called Truth. I read it I wrote this last August. I'm okay, because I know the truth. Now the plot's revealed. So I will know how to be in the story without losing me in the narrative. Wow. Thank you for letting me share. I love you all. Thank you, Lori. Um, also, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, I didn't realize that it had been a year since John has been gone. Um, John uh, came a lot to the open mic here, and he also um, started one um, wordplay in uh, Elkhart. <clears throat> so we collaborated a lot, and um, 
his passing was something I would have never, ever, ever, ever could imagine. And so it kind of devastated us, especially for us that do a lot of poetry together. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like family. And so, you know, especially, you know, you all that come a lot and talk to me a lot, you know, there's, there's family there. And so when something happens traumatic like that, um, it marks us. And I also um, wrote a poem, a poem about John. So I'm, I think many of us did. So we do miss him dearly. Uh, thank you for um, remembering to bring that back to my memory. Um, usually like when someone, there's a gentleman that calls me and when I see his name come up on my phone, I go, mm -mm. <laughs> I'm like, no bad news, no bad news. And then I let it go to voicemail and I call him back. But anyways, we appreciate you, Lori. One more time for her. <clears throat> Miranda. Come on down. So the first poem I'm going to share with you is called Orchestrated. It is my darkest poem completely um, that I've ever written. And it was a... <clears throat> pretty tumultuous time in my life when I wrote that, but I was laying on the living room floor, right? And I could see like out in the woods, this amphitheater and um, there was a band of demons came and played in the orchestra and I had the baton. So oh. this is the poem that, <laughs> was wrote because of, like I said, to a very tumultuous time I was going through. At the worst of times, in the darkest possible night, when the shadows creep and the winds howl, the deep dark orchestrates a song, and I would like to think that the devil doesn't fiddle, but he sits first chair. Okay. I notice a band of demons, and my soul is scared. I didn't notice the conductor, and I barely heard the song. Hold up in the corner, I cried and cried. I didn't notice the spirit, but I felt the gentle nudge. My hand was firmly gripped as I was led to the stage. I wasn't handed a violin, viola, cello, or bass. There was no chair for me to sit, just one empty spot, and it was on center stage where I was handed the baton. Instead of knowing the song, the sheet was blank and the light came on. Hurt took the piano and aggravation the violin. Broken picked up the microphone and the song of repression began. It was not the song I wanted to play and it's not the song I wanted to hear, but they were my best players and their music, my worst fears. Oh. I'd rather hear love on the piano and ease on the violin. I wanted a happy story where a happily ever after could begin. At the worst of times in the darkest possible night, when the shadows creep and the wind, ho and the wind howls, the deep dark orchestrates a song. And it is up to me to count to hand out the music and up to me to count out the beat. It is up to me to kick the devil out of first seat. Okay. I have another one. It's a little bit lighter. So <laughs> I self esteem is not something I've really had much of and um so one of a if you're struggling with self-esteem one of the struggles that maybe you're going through like i was was who am i what is my identity mm -hmm. and so i wrote this poem called identity store Ooh. I 
I shop in search of me, wanting to find out who I am meant to be. Up and down the shopping aisles I go, in the identity store you know. I see a white wedding dress. It is more beautiful than the rest. It fits and it is made to be. My identity as a wife, you see. I am not done, I am not full, so I continue to shop to learn to grow. One child, two child, and just one more. I am a mom and will be forevermore. The store has dresses of this size and that, like scrubs for an ER cleaner that fit a while back. I shop in search of me, asking everyone whom I am meant to be. I try on service uniforms of this and that, offering hope to teenagers could be my hat. On a bus I ride, my service grows. Is this the identity hat I need? Or is there something more indeed? Maybe I have always searched the wrong store. Is there something more? Should the search be with the one? Should I search for meaning with God's son? If my identity rests in Jesus Christ, all the hats and dresses have meaning in my life. And if I look to him to dress, I will find the outfit that fits the best. It may be a hat in service or a dress in a helping hand. It will be a life of service he commands. Mm -hmm. And I have time for one more. into my old one, so disbelief. So I was Young when I wrote this and very busy getting pregnant with my oldest child and her biological sperm donor. <laughs> um, yes, this is G-rated. This is not. <laughs> Disbelief. I can't believe I didn't listen to my own words of wisdom or to the advice of respected others on this incident of life. I couldn't imagine these words coming from you to me, not in the time or place you told me, nor how the words came across. Words of wisdom blew down the drain, washed by temptation away. Now I, the heavy cost, must pay. You knew how it went because you sent many others on this road. Is this the road I'm on, traveling, obviously blind? Am I jumping into mud holes, enjoying the muck and grind? You warned me for future relationships, or was a warning for me to be warned from you? Will I get in deeper only to find I have disappeared from the ladder and could smell the muck and grind? I came out lucky with only a scar or two, but next time you say I might not, I could be in too deep. So why do I keep going and bucking against the grain? How could I think all is sunny and not feel the beating rain? Thank you, Miranda, and thank you for coming back. Came for the first time last month. Or was it? Yep. And uh, read for the first time here and encouraged her. You all have been very helpful encouraging her, and she came back. And that's what we love to see. That's probably a lot of our. Um, uh, we can probably all relate to that where we came one time, read, and then, you know, got back into it. So thank you again one more time for Miranda.
I don't know if I'm gonna say this right, but is it Amon? A mean. Please, this is your first time here? Uh, yes. yes, so y'all give some big love for me. <laughs> So I'm going to read two, and if I have enough time, I'm going to try to do one without reading. So this first one I'm going to read is called In Pieces. I need to put hands on myself. Yeah, it's time for the chastising. Because I've been fantasizing, living in a dream, it seems, when I should have been realizing. Life's been real life and in trifling. I might have been done gave up, but God keeps me fighting. Sometimes I want to stay down like I got hit by Tyson, but I know if I stop striving, ain't no telling what could have or might have been. So through these tears I'm fighting, trying to see something inside this empty soul. God knows what my spirit holds, so although he's let me bend a little bit, he'll never let me fold. He's never left me in the cold, or at least I'm told, because it feels like I got frostbite and not in my fingers and toes. My soul's froze and my spirit's cold, but I know God can warm me up. With faith, I walk into his warm embrace because even though life has torn me up, I'm still trying to pick up the pieces. This one right here is called Save Me. Sometimes I need to be saved for myself, but I decline the help every single time. I be on the battlefield of my mind, avoiding conflicts with no weapons and no spines. Hard times be crushing me like a defensive line, got me feeling like Bill Withers, because there's barely any sunshine. Darkness every day, overwhelming my mind. I try to find a way out, but there's no ladder for this uphill climb. The pain won't subside and I can't hide, so I strive to face it head on. It's hard to describe, but if I try, paralyzed, we'll be dead on. I'm stuck in the muck of my mind and can't feel my spine and it feels like my legs gone. I'm fucked up and I know that I'm dead wrong, but my heart's in pieces and it's hurting me. I need open heart surgery so I can repair, fix, mend what's broken and God can work in me. So I can once again see worth in me. God, please work with me. Give me strength, faith, and patience. But don't take my love, just remove the hurt in me. Because it's with the utmost certainty that I know love is the savior of the world. Okay, so me personally, I have an affinity for um, my black sisters. Um, so this poem that I'm trying to I'm trying to learn it without the without the paper. So it's called My Sisters. Growing up, I was lost because I was taught. So of course, I thought that the so-called black woman came from the so-called black man's ribs. But that's not fact. That's a historical fib. See, once I was no longer that kid from back then, and I was taught for myself. I then saw. And through research, I found truth, which is all proof my prior thoughts were not. Yeah, that story was his. Because within your blood, my sis, is the DNA to an entire nation. You know, that E gene demonstration. So you're not only the backbone of civilization, you birthed it. But we as men haven't fulfilled our purpose, showing you what your true worth is or the proper appreciation. What's worse is we've been the personification of failure, guilt, and regret. Because while we should strive to get you closer to your dreams and take you high like Bopoli advised, too often in our lives, it seems, you down, we have let. And with all due respect, my brothers, we can ill afford any more of that. So we must, hold on. So we must put you aboard our back, reach out a helping hand to pick up the slack Give you a hand when life's boulders get so heavy on your shoulders that you're about to drop. We must treat you like we all we got and stop like we can afford for you to be any lower than your best if we're ever going to reach the crest or reclaim our spot back at the top. Because we cannot, I repeat, we cannot elevate any higher than you, my sister, because God chose you. 
to be the foundation on which we build upon. But unfortunately, we broke you. So it's no wonder why there's been far too many of us men not standing on all 10 in your defense like we're supposed to. But I suppose you got a proposal of how we're supposed to find success as a nation, my sister, if you are not right. The answer is contrite, yet quite simple. We won't. It's like trying to fly a stream without even having a kite. You don't. Right. <laughs> it's like bringing a knife to a gunfight. It's like getting to enjoy the sun's warmth without reaping any of the real benefits brung forth from the sun's light. Mm. Yeah, you know I'm right. So harder we must fight to reverse this plight and get back right to following our ancestors' directions. Because my brothers, we done tore down our support system, but my sisters, y'all done wore down y'all protection. Which begs the question, how do we get that divine connection back? I'm accepting any and all suggestions. Because I know that the direction is progression. If we can somehow get back to manifesting God's love for us and to one another, and for one another, get back to stepping. Yes. You're all responsibility, my sister, and that goes without question. But we've left you looking silly and second guessing. So it's no wonder that our leadership is in question. We gotta do better, my sisters. All right, first time at the poetry den. I mean, please give them some love again. Get with me afterwards yes. so I get your information. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, anyone else that would like to read tonight? She's not looking at me. <laughs> if not, we're going to uh, move ahead with our featured artist. Y'all ready for that? All right. Uh, my friend Ted, Ted, how do you exactly say your last name? What a camp. What a camp. Ted, what a camp. Ted comes to us most poetry dance all the way from Kokomo. Mm -hmm. So he's one of our um, furthest participants that comes a lot, and I appreciate him so much. So he, uh, most times, uh, <clears throat> my featured artists, I ask them to give me a bio, they can say whatever they want. Um, and he sent me this, and so I'll give this to you. Ted was born in St. Louis, Missouri, prior to the start of World War II. The war ended at the beginning of my third grade year. Those early years made me a deep, made a deep impression upon my life. He attended parochial schools. On his 17th birthday during uh, senior year, he was enlisted in the Navy. The day after graduation, he says, I was in boot camp. During my service years, I was in the Navy Air Branch. I was discharged as part of a reduction in force movement. Hence, one day I was in the Navy. The very next day, I was attending college at Southeast Missouri State. Retired from a 43-year career in education as a teacher, coach, and administrator. He was married for 57 years with a family of four boys. And he says this, uh, something just for fun. His first time on the mic at the Poetry Den was uh, January 13th, 2001. Wow. The number of appearances, this is amazing, 26 times, which I'm just, I don't think I've even counted how many times I've been here. <laughs> um, the night of tonight will be his 27th appearance. So please put your hands together and show some very great love. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. If you all were trying to do the math on what that meant for my birth, I'm 86. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I want to tell you, I enjoyed your poetry tonight. You, boy, you have set 
very high standard. Give yourself a hand. I want to tell you why. So good. I, Pam will tell you I was nervous about tonight. I am nervous about tonight in terms of your expectations. And I got reflecting on it about my wife, 57 years, same woman, 57 years put up with me. Uh, yeah, that'll tell you something. And, and I asked her later in marriage, I said, you know, how, how did I do? You know, I, I meet your expectations. She said, oh yeah, most of the time you did. And I felt good about that, you know? And then she said, but I had real low expectations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my first poem, when I was in the mic for the first time here, I, I did a poem about a soldier came home, a military type thing, and you heard, I've got a little service. So I thought I would open tonight with a poem entitled, The Unknown. And there are so many people over the years who have, we don't know, but have fought to protect us. Mm -hmm. And they fight for us, and they don't know us. So this is about the unknown. The haunting notes of taps beckon lights out. From bunks, we feel the ship beneath us roll, and hear the vessels groan, cut ways apart. That leaves a path of foam to mark our route. Tomorrow, we shall wake to a cannon's roar. Afraid, we will all fight to live. Afraid, it is our day to die. Unseen enemies hurl their shells. In return, batteries belch death. Explosion, fire, breaking decks, screams. We struggle together, no names. In survival's fight, <laughs> we are all the same. Glories of war, only a living hell. Beckons death's toll. I'm sorry, Beckons death to tally its toll. Dead cast to the sea, living watch our fate. Duty, country, God, family, allegiances of our burden, carried with solemn devotion. We are the warriors you owe your freedom, the unknown who risk all for the unknown. Your poetry tonight, several of you, reflected on family. And, I, and traditions in the family are an important thing. So I have a couple here about traditions. Traditions and inheritance. Stories that families write together. A legacy uniting generations with the past. Keepsakes for us to treasure forever. Proof how time together was passed. First learned as a young girl or boy, handed down by a father and mother. Simple acts bringing unity and joy, forming unspoken bonds with each other. The memories created when done add to a family's wealth one by one. Traditions and inheritance. This is about a personal tradition started with the birth of our oldest son. A rocking horse with a big red bow hidden behind the Christmas tree, a gift covered so it wouldn't show, for the youngest of four just turned three. She knew Santa was due to come after sitting on his lap a few days before, <laughs> well aware where gifts come from. And Santa used chimneys, not the front door. Her eyes wide open staring at the tree, Christmas music and lights burning bright. There were so many colorful packages to see, suddenly screeched at what caught her sight. A pony, it's a pony. Santa brought me a pony for me. Lifted onto her little steed, the rocking begun. It was easy to see. She was as happy as can be, shouting, see me, see me, run, pony, run. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the story is not finished yet. She is the 26th of my descendants, and there will be more, I'm willing to bet, 
to ride this pony as a Christmas present. Run, pony, run. Yeah. When I was a photographer, competitive photographer, I did a whole series on hands. They're remarkable. Look at your hands. There's different shapes, they're different colors, they're different sizes, different rings, different fingernail polish, you know, or broken nails or whatever. And you do different things with them. You all of you have different talents. And so this is, I wrote a series of poems about hands. And so this is the first one, just called The Beginning. Left hand before my right, before, no, I don't start it though. Left hand, <laughs> left hand met my right before I could see. Newborn, they fostered access to my world. From that moment, a wondrous gift to me. Fingers enabled life's mystery to unfurl. Suck my thumb, grass a finger, hold a bottle or breast to suckle from. Then become quiet and linger. Mom sought songs, made sleep come. My hands helped me to learn to crawl. By one, <laughs> unsteady steps followed. I found my hands protect if I fall and fed me <laughs> all that I swallowed. <laughs> yeah. New textures and temps part of my day, learning it hurt <laughs> when fingers pinched in a night, how to fold to pray. My teddy bear put safely in my clinch. My hands taught me many things for me, my new world they did bring. We all write poetry and it's about words. And so I have some here that uh, will describe some things about words. Words do have powerful meanings. So I try my best to use them right. But sometimes I do slip up and fail. And my ignorance shows when I write. I won't let this literary frailty stop me because it's the thought that really counts. Besides, if you still understand what I mean, well, that's the point of it and most paramount. So I'll keep letting my pen tickle words on paper. Someday they will have seen and read everywhere, put to good use, printed as bathroom wallpaper. <laughs> I did not use toilet paper, although I was toilet tempted. <laughs> yeah. I was looking up words and I came across this one, and this is by many considered the two most powerful words in the English language. The two words are because and you. Uh, and you put those together because you. So here we go. Because the word serves to justify what has been inferred, and you must comply. You identifies drawing into view all others' eyes on you and only you. Because you declares how your fate will trail, and if life one fares. Did you thrive or fail? Ooh. Yeah, a couple wow. powerful words. In there. I pick up words sometimes and mess around with them. And some of you have been here before will know that. So this one is uh, about the word some. Some, just a word that is plain. We often use it to help explain. Some means not all, just a few. Add a word, it changes your view. Sometime, somewhere, someday, someone, someplace, somehow, somebody, something, some way, <laughs> and somewhat, all add to the cue. Oh, by the way, there's another sum, a total of all the inputs that come, a homophone that sounds the same, but spelling gives it a different name. So as I sum up my little rhyme, I want you to know before I go, I'll continue to use some, some of the time. <laughs> You're all familiar with sonnets and prose and poetry and limericks and 
Tonka and Haiku, I wanted to refresh your memory or introduce you to a form of poetry called inflationary poetry. Oh. Yeah. Now this goes back to a man by the name of Victor Borga, B-O-R-G-E. If some of you uh, senior citizens might remember him back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Yeah, yeah look around. Yeah, your kids don't know. But he was a classic pianist, very competent. But his act and performance was turned into a comic routine. And he would take a book, part of his act, and read to you. And when he would read, if he came to punctuation, for example, a period would go, you know, a, a comma go, you know, you know, and so he would make noises. And I'm not going to do that. But because it's inflationary, well, the poem will explain it. And inflationary poetry is just plain fun. If a word sounds like a number, add one. So let's try a line to show how your poem should go. One, two, three, four, shut the door is two, three, four, five, shut the door. Now that you understand this three, <laughs> let's see how you do, okay? Three day, I went for a five mile walk. <laughs> my three feet at this did bulk. Two steps at a time made my 11 toes of mine. <laughs> I threw up my three hands when my three eyes saw hot sand. So I went back to my five door car and headed for the seven pack bar. Well, the clock just ticked nine. So my friend, this is the last line. <laughs> Those of you know that I've been here, I tend to write stories of the past in my poems. And this is one, I actually did a series of these about porch light and about what that means in our life and society. So this is the beginning of the three. I'll only read the one, but it's called When the Porch Light Went Out. Even today, I still recall the loss I felt. New Year's Eve, midnight, Grandpa passed. It was a heartbreaking blow I was dealt. That night, the porch light, too, burned its last. The day the house was built, it first lit. For six decades, marking days of his life, the same bulb for 60 years never quit. Faithful friend in both good times and strife. A symbol for which the family was known, a beacon for travelers, family, friend, and for us, a message. Welcome home. We were safe again at our journey's end. Children, grandchildren played under the glow burning every night from dusk till dawn, dressed in summer bugs and winter snow, lighting our playground on grandpa's lawn. Decorated with wreaths for Christmas day, corn stalks around the post at Thanksgiving, placards hung for each on their birthday, singling all here, the loving family is living. The house now empty, dark forevermore, only left is now, what I hold in memory, the life I love gone to return nevermore. I'll not soon live again in such joyful reverie. T tears still well up when I think about that night when the porch light went out. Thank you. This is um, National Women's History Month. Yes. So, yeah. So I'm going I'm to venture into dangerous ground and have a couple poems about women. Uh, Wayne's got the car running in case I need it. Uh, the first one, if you watch Hallmark television movies, as soon as I read the first line, you're going to know how this poem ends. Okay? All right, here we go. But you're a prince, she exclaimed. <laughs> Here we go, yeah. I replied, yes, I am. It's just a name. <laughs> but you're a prince, she insisted. No, I'm just a regular guy, and you, you caught my eye. <laughs> but you're a prince, why me? It's so obvious, only you I see. But you're a prince, again, she said. Oh, just put that thought out of your head. But you're a prince, I'm not like you. 
No, no, to me, you are a princess too. What's your prince, she gasped. I kissed her hand on bended knee to make my gesture grand. But you're a prince, this can't be. Is it true? It is, and my princess, I've fallen in love with you. Um, then my prince, I will be your princess, for this too is true. I also do truly love you. <laughs> The second one, uh, I read here once before, and uh, I escaped safely, so I'm going to try it again. You notice I'm shaking trying to get this one out. It's my thoughts about women. Mm -hmm. Dangerous ground. Here we go. All right. Women are adored since childhood, created beloved, <laughs> never understood. They are born to be an eternal mystery, unsolvable by men throughout history. Every woman is obviously so unique, yet all possess a strong-minded streak. Uh -huh. They often do just as they please. Men must learn to accept with ease. If she acts as if life is a forever menopause, <laughs> Most likely, it's a man that is the cause. <laughs> if you can't love her when she's stressed, then you really don't deserve her best. Mm. Worrisome are, women are worrisome creatures, just one of their mysterious features. If something to worry about doesn't exist, then that would be put on the top of the list. <laughs> Here we go. Never meant to be equal to men. Women are born superior, <laughs> far and again. Being a woman is the most difficult trade. A man could handle it is yet to be made. <laughs> Their spirit runs as deep as the sea, calm, wild, beautiful, and free. They have a gift to create life. Love a man, patience enough to be his wife. <laughs> Over the years, I have collected uh, comments by various people running campaigns. And this happened to be a presidential a year, election year. Do you have anybody who noticed that? Yes? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so th I, I'm not pointing at this any given president or any particular candidate. Uh, pick, take your choice, uh, but it's titled Mr. President. There, this is a little difficult to read because as you read poetry, if it has the same words repeating, to get the rhythm and sound of it is a little difficult. So I hope I do this the way it's intended. I will try my very hardest to try my very hardest. <laughs> to clearly explain what to me is very plain. I am confused. I am confused. I believe, I believe, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think. I think, I think, I know, I know, I know. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought thoughts. <laughs> I deny, I deny, I deny. It is not true, it is true. It is true, it is not true. There, that should do. Make it all clear for you. <laughs> please vote for me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, please vote for me. Um, this also is uh, March, and it is a uh, time for the Irish and would-be Irish. And uh, I, I, I have a son who was born actually on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. And I discovered a few uh, years ago through DNA that I am contaminated a little bit with the Irish blood. <laughs> uh, but this is uh, the title of the poem is O Danny Boy, which is a very familiar, almost national anthem to the Irish. But it's really a tribute to the music, not the lyrics. The music, Londonary Air, existed 
long, long time before. It was very popular among the Irish. And it was in 1919 or somewhere in there. Uh, the lyrics were added, which fit very nicely. So this is about how the people felt about the lyrics at the time. Tis be a bonny day, is told, by dawn's rising sun, o'er the hills, across the bay beyond. A music sound on the wind fills its flow with an Irish prayer, Londonary air. Its sweet notes rush fond memories to lads and lasses of loved ones, home, live far away, alone. Now calls it to return to the land we're born and once more enfold with Ireland's colors, green, white, and gold. This one is based upon a little bit of truth in my life. Um, if you watch Gaelic Woman, which is an uh, annual performance, this year is our 20th year, uh, Irish women perform uh, on, it's basically on PBS channel, uh, and they sing traditional Irish songs, dance, and they mix in some others, but they have three that are probably pretty faithful uh, 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 Irish, uh, well, Danny Boy, and, and uh, you, you bring what, Under My Wings, what, uh, I can't think of the title now, and then uh, Our Parting Glass, which is the last. This is made on a parting glass. I met this girl, Irish, her name's Barbara, but I'd, I'd called her Irish for so long, because she's Irish, heritage, met her in second grade, and we were sweethearts, seriously sweethearts in high school. And uh, at class reunions, uh, you know, well, anyway, at, at the graduation, I went Navy, and she went another direction, and we kind of separated apart. Uh, it, 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 we, you know, right, when you get together, graduation classes and that, uh, we were very often asked, you know, we thought you two were getting married, and, and why not? And my reply was, all, well, well, she never asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara had a, she's a wonderful woman, came from a wonderful family, uh, had a tough life. Uh, her husband, uh, Illinois graduates, both of them, he died early by brain tumors, and, tan and she raised three adopted children by herself. Uh, wonderful job, family treasure. Uh, although I moved all around the country, uh, she and my mom stayed close and took care of my mom. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. I still talk with her regularly, a couple times a week. We're still close. We still care about each other and have that connection. So this is a little bit about our parting glass and a little bit about things in our life. And it's, well, anyway, I'll read it. Separate, yet couple, we travel through life. Mostly good times, well, a few filled with strife. Yet we stayed connected throughout, caring for each other, even in times of doubt. Apart from you, I've been forced to roam. Now once more, this time I travel alone. Too quickly the last hours have passed. Before I go, let's drink our parting glass. I repent for all the suffering I caused to thee. I truly wish the hurt had only been to me. Our union has stood the challenges of time. It is with love our hearts truly align. These words I want to hear you didn't say. Please don't go this night. Please stay. So it is farewell. I wish you a joy that lasts. In my toast, I send love through our parting glass. I treasure each moment we share, friendship, love, nothing can compare. The clock's hands call me, call for me to depart, forced again, once more, to be apart. So, with coat in hand, tip of my cap, I exit to follow an unknown life's map. So raise our drinks to celebrate our past, toast next we meet as we sip our parting glass. I'm going to wind up with uh, an answer to a question I've been asking, I'm sure all of you. Uh, 
Favorite poet? Who's your favorite poet? <laughs> well, all would like to know. The answer is obvious. You'll see. There's only one who wins when this contest is done. He writes with quality and pens words with which I agree. <laughs> Silly you. Of course it just has to be. My favorite poet is me. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I had low expectations. Thank you. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you, Ted. Um, Ted is a very sweet person. Um, and I've tried, tried numerous times to bless him, and he won't let me do it. Um, he's responsible for this nice chair um, that you know we painted the poetry. I painted the poetry head on, so now we all have a, a nice bench that we can uh, relax on. And, um, but he always, um, as well as other of you, but he's always given me like encouraging words, and that um, is very. He he actually tells me things that I know you know, about the poetry then and what we're doing. And it's just good to hear it out loud. Um, and so I appreciate you very much. And the fact that you come this way, like in my 80s, you know, God, please let me do something like that. Because <laughs> 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 college might be my best friend. Um, but yeah, just the fact that you come out here to be with us is a blessing. You add yes. a lot to the yes. poetry then. You really do. <laughs> But thank you. Um, if you know before you leave, uh, give Ted a pat on the back and tell him how well he did tonight. Um, this is the conclusion of the poetry day for March. We'll be back here in April, which is actually um, uh, Poetry Month. April is the month of poetry, wow. and so I hope that you will come and be with us. Um, bring a friend, drag a friend. Drag an enemy, drag your family. <laughs> um, tell them to come. It, I mean, this is a place you can kind of tell that we, this place is for for many. We can talk yeah. about whatever you like to talk about. Um, and so I'm glad that all of you feel comfortable about doing that. And for those that you come to, to support, we appreciate you. Thank you, Sue, for being here um, and all the newcomers that were here. So that's the conclusion of this. But um, say hi to one another and see you next month. Yeah.